Whitney Houston, renowned for her incredible vocal prowess and versatility, Houston's voice and music continue to inspire generations. Don't Be Cruel, How Bobby Brown Was Kidnapped and Hogtied Naked by a New York Street Gang, Leaving Whitney Houston to Pay a $400,000 Ransom to Save His Life. There was a moment in time when Whitney Houston would do anything for her love, Bobby Brown, even if that meant paying a $400,000 ransom to save the R&B bad boy's life. David Popcorn Collins, a former gangster in Harlem, New York, said there was no real beef with Bobby Brown when his gang, the Preacher Crew, run by Clarence Heatley, aka Preacher, kidnapped him in the 90s. Collins was an eyewitness to the entire plot and has shared his account of what happened on various platforms, especially in his books, Preacher of the Streets and No More Harlem, The David Collins Story. It was April 1993. Whitney's movie, The Bodyguard and the movie's album were big hits, he said in a 2009 interview with the National Enquirer before breaking down what happened on the night his gang decided to snatch up one of music's biggest stars. <laughs>
Inside, a man named Malik took charge, stripping Brown naked, hog-tying him, and stuffing a rag in his mouth. He was a weird dude from Virginia, Collins says, describing Malik. He was a military brat. He had a military background, you know. Upon learning that the man he had hogtied was the multiple platinum new edition singer, Malik bizarrely attempted to coerce a performance from him. Sing the F N song, Collins recalls Malik demanding. When Brown refused to sing, Malik took a lighter, grabbed a naked Brown by his penis, and then allegedly burned the hairs off of his scrotum. Throughout this ordeal, Brown remained restrained and exposed. The preacher then showed up and took the rag out of Bobby's mouth. It's a shame we have to kill you, Collins reveals in his book. The R&B star begged for his life, pleading that his wife would pay the debt. Preacher left the room, and his men then terrorized Bobby for two hours. They kicked him. They told him they would kill Whitney. One of them put a gun to his head. Bobby was weeping when the preacher came back in the room, begging the preacher to let him call Whitney, an excerpt from Collins' book reads. Eventually, Preacher allowed Brown one phone call to his celebrity wife. Once on the phone, Preacher and his guys leveraged her husband's pitiful plight to negotiate a $400,000 payout. Upon learning the terms to secure his freedom, Whitney Houston was told by the gangsters not to involve authorities. Houston, disguised in oversized glasses and a wig, arrived solo in a cab at a Bronx location with a bag containing the money to secure her husband's release. Unshaken by the dingy apartment and the dangerous and armed hustlers in the room, she entered the apartment, boldly tossed the money onto the floor, and demanded that someone tell her Brown's whereabouts. The men told her that he was in the other room, and after learning where he was, she wasted no time to get to him, untied him, and demanded that the people who kidnapped her man get his clothing. They came to an agreement. She was personally going to bring $400,000 to get her man back. The next day, she did just that. She was wearing a wig. She paid the money. Bobby was free to go, recounts Collins. Collins says that while the I Will Always Love You singer was bossed up and strong during the ordeal, her husband was a crying wreck. You know, you got you got gangsters sitting there with guns in their hands, he said, she was gangsta. She came to get that mother, f her. After witnessing her assertiveness, Collins said he and his crew had newfound respect among the men for Houston's strength, loyalty, and dedication to her loved one. Houston and Brown were married from 1992 to 2007. Their marriage was beset by drug addiction and physical abuse. At the same time, Houston recorded her biggest-selling album, The Bodyguard, which sold over 45 million units worldwide. Clarence the Preacher, Heatley was indicted on July 15, 1996, on three counts of murder and conspiracy to murder in aid of racketeering activity at age 43. In February 1999, he took a plea deal, pleading guilty to racketeering and murder conspiracy in connection with 13 drug-related homicides to avoid the death penalty. He is now serving a life sentence.